Today I've got a map with all 32 NFL teams on it, but with the press of uh, this magic button right here, our map also transforms to feature 32 different college football programs. Together, the NFL and college team representing each region will be working together to try and be the last area left standing. Prior to each do or die matchup, I'll be spinning this simple wheel, which will dictate if said matchup takes place in the NFL or NCAA. For example, the first matchup of our video we're spinning for right now, and we're going to get a college football battle. For this video, as you can see, I've predetermined our first 16 matchups. And starting in the Pacific Northwest, it's not Seahawks 49ers. It'll be UW versus Cal. Now, the reason I've predetermined our first round of matchups is to avoid one team or program getting too overpowered in the early stages. Because the winning team from each game will not only take over new land, but also steal a player for their NFL squad. So, for example, if Colorado beats Minnesota, the Broncos will then be able to steal Justin Jefferson from the Vikings for any appearances moving forward. Unfortunately, CFB 25 lets us have zero fun with rosters, so steal a player only applies to Madden, and the NFL teams uh, sound good. Giddy up. Let's get to the first matchup of our video, Washington, California, also affecting Seahawks 49ers. Oh boy, as a Seahawks fan, I, I can't lie to you right now, I'm pretty happy with this outcome. As a content creator, less so because it was an absolute blowout. Look at that stat line from Jonah Coleman. It was all you dub a 20 to 7 victory. Cal barely got the bat off their shoulder, man. And that putrid showing from the Golden Bears means they lose all this territory. You dub clearing out. Additionally, it means, of course, Seattle takes over 49er territory. San Fran, we don't even get to see him in the game. But if we do see the Seattle Seahawks in action this video, they will get to steal a 49er. So, uh, that's a lot of fun. Let's get it moving, man. Now we know what's going on. We'd get a second straight CFB spin from our wheel. An all Cali matchup of schools coming up. I'll be honest, I didn't know whether to give UCLA to the Rams or Chargers and vice versa with USC. So uh, if you're mad about it, let me know in the comments section. USC out to an early lead. A lead that they would never surrender. The battle for the victory bell. USC takes it in pretty convincing fashion, winning it for them and also for the LA Chargers. Just like that, Cal. California turns purple and red as we'd move along with a third straight CFB spin, meaning UNLV Arizona was on deck. We finally got a good finish in this game. Arizona is up a touchdown. They scored on their first overtime possession. UNLV a chance to answer or the Wildcats might end this thing with a defensive stop. Is Arizona really going to hold tough on four straight plays? No chance they run it again, right? UNLV, you got to throw this run. They hand it off and this time their man gets in. Fair enough. Okay, now we're into sudden death two-point convert territory and Arizona indeed converted on their first attempt. Meaning pressures on UNLV. You gotta match them. Will they go to the run game again? They do. Yeah, we got a marathon. Which defense will come through first? It's UNLV once again. Arizona, man. Don't get scored on two plays in a row. They're going to the air and that's a simple slant for two. Our marathon, however, would finally end, unfortunately, for Arizona as Noah Fafita, who was indeed under center, took a sack. Back, and that was game. UNLV overtakes Arizona as the Wildcats and Cardinals are eliminated. Somehow we get a fourth straight CFB spin. This is getting ridiculous. Colorado, Minnesota. And we are again right down to the wire in a battle. Minnesota though, third and 19. This might be game. Colorado, will their defense come through? It is four down territory as the Gophers complete a pass. Mm, it's short of the sticks. Uh, this is a very manageable distance. They're going to the ground game and he converts. Okay. Third and three. Now again, it's four down territory, but you can put pressure on here, Colorado. Uh, not literally though, that's such a clean pocket. Brosmer circling around and that's into field goal territory. On their second possession, though, Colorado, I was jumping in, hoping they would go for it on fourth and one, instead settling for three, okay. And he missed it. Oh, he missed the kick. I didn't even see that. It is so over. All Minnesota needs is a three. Are they good? fourth and what? What did they just? Oh my word, his field goal was blocked. Bro, this game is, is outrageous. All right, now it's 32-32. We're just gonna keep it in the menus. Colorado fails on their next two-point convert. I think Minnesota can win it right here. College football OT is insane. 
saying, all right, Minnesota now, whatever possession this is, the fourth or fifth they scored. Colorado needs to answer. It's the same situation. They're handing off and they're nice. stuffed in the backfield. It's over. Minnesota, a marathon in OT will take it 34-32. We'd mercifully get our first NFL Madden spin next. And a good matchup. Two Bears Packers. Let's do it. Well, it was it, it was supposed to be a good game. It, it wasn't a good game, man. Division rivalry, the NFC North cooking in real life. Uh, Caleb Williams, that's, that's just bad, my guy. The Bears are eliminated. Moving deeper into the Midwest, we'd go right back to college football, meaning Indiana challenges mighty Michigan. Senior Curtis Rourke would lead the way, a Big Ten upset for the Hoosiers. Wow. An in-state Ohio battle would also take place again in college football fashion. Once again, we were on the verge of a rather large upset, but in just two plays, Will Howard was able to put the Buckeyes ahead with under a minute left, and they never looked back. They held on. Our battle of Pennsylvania would see us finally swing back to the NFL. Steelers, Eagles, you know it, you love it. This was an ugly game throughout, but a scramble by six late by Justin Fields put Pittsburgh up with three minutes left, and the Steelers' defense would force a turnover on downs. Another rather surprising outcome, I cannot lie. To New York we'd go. Another NFL spin. Three touchdowns for Josh Allen. The Bills simply dominated the Giants. It, it was never close. And we'd get a third straight NFL spin, pitting the Jets against the New England Patriots. And with new weapon Devontae Adams along for the ride, Aaron Rodgers and the New York Jets do advance. Our map is really beginning to take shape. Our next matchup will be Baltimore, Washington, or doesn't matter. We're getting the NFL version. And we just saw this matchup IRL from when I'm recording this video. Lamar and the Ravens did get the better of Jaden Daniels and the Commanders, but will it take place here as well? The Ravens really don't mess around in Madden 25. They get such amazing sims. They are on the road here in uh, in DC. Looks like the Commanders have ball. They're about to score on their first possession. Yes, they do. Terry McLaurin from Jaden. And look at this. Washington never looked back. Um, I'm sorry, Ravens fans, but like I said, y'all always get the best sims, so I'm okay with this result. Back to college football. We go for our next matchup. UNC taking on Tennessee. And these college football matchups are really carrying the intrigue in this video. North Carolina on the verge of uh, taking down Tennessee. Under 40 seconds left. Tennessee needs to march into field goal position. That was a big chunk play, but the third and final timeout for Tennessee has been burned. So here you go. You need another chunk play, a spike. It's really quite simple. Picked off! And he gets picked off. Oh, my. a severely underthrown ball. Just four more predetermined matchups on our map. Another CFB spin. Uh, this one could get ugly. Georgia UCF. Yeah, it's 21 to three just before halftime. But now look at the score. 27-19. UCF still in it. KJ Jefferson trying to orchestrate some magic. Just one time out left for the Knights. They are in good position here. He's got a clean pocket. He's oh, no. Another, another game ending INT. You just hate to see that. We'd go back to Florida for a Bucks Dolphins matchup after getting an NFL spin in a crazy low scoring battle here. 14 14, under 30 seconds left. Tua is injured in this timeline. Can Tyler Huntley. Kick it? No. No, Tyler Huntley can't do anything. Indeed, we end up in OT, and I am not watching more Tyler Huntley. Wow, they just got stopped, stopped and they missed a field goal. It gets blocked, dude. Can Tyler Huntley lead the Dolphins down for field goal? No, it's fourth and 10. They're going to punt it away. All right. Day two. Wait, flash forward. No score still. Baker and the Bucks have the ball again. I think they're in field goal range. Uh, Just end this thing, right? Just th thank you. T took long enough. But yes, Baker and the Bucks do win. I mean, I really don't even want to give the Bucks territory here. I mean, that was a gross victory, but whatever. I guess they earned it. This is a really important spin because our next matchup would be Kansas City, New Orleans in the NFL. I mean, that would be a Chiefs blowout or it'd be Kansas LSU in college football. I'm sorry, Louisiana. I mean, let's see the game play out first. Chiefs, Saints. Yeah, Um. okay. And yeah, that game went about as uh, anybody would have expected. And this will be our final spin of the first round, the predetermined matchups. This is for the state of Texas. Wherever we go, CFB NFL, it's going to be massive and it is called college football, but it'll be controlled by TCU and Texas. Oh yeah, yeah, we need a good finish here. Let's go. And just like I mentioned with our California teams, if you have an issue with TCU representing the Cowboys, Texas, the Texans, and what, whatever, you can let me know down below. There's no changing it now. Texas starts with a field goal. Wow, Josh Hoover to JP Richardson. TCU is up 20 to nine. Texas can't convert in the red zone. Oh my goodness, Hoover to Richardson again. It's, it's a big lead for TCU in the second half. Dude, I can't cannot believe my eyes. I can, the TCU, they're only like an 82 overall in college football 25. Texas is a 93. What am I? Do, they, they poured it on and never looked. What a disaster class from the Longhorns. Oh!
I did not see this coming. Just a wildly shocking finish to that game. And it leaves our college football map looking like so with 16 programs eliminated. And our NFL map looking like this Dallas Cow. Of course, the Cowboys survived. Shout out to TCU, I guess. And with our maps down to just 16 teams and programs left from here, no more predetermined matchups. We are going chaos. As for the remainder of our matchups, I will be spinning a wheel traditional imperialism style. We might as well get our next matchup set. Which team and or program are the Chargers? Okay, who are they going to be challenging? Or should I say, where are they going to be challenging? It's a direction. We know how this works. Um, maybe I don't. My computer's glitching a bit. The Chargers slash USC going right into Raiders slash UNLV territory. But of course, we got to figure out where the game will be taking place. And we are going back to college football, which means yes, USC, UNLV, a big chunk of real estate on the line. I am also going to go ahead and add the stolen players to our NFL teams. And that's going to continue. If USC wins this game, the Chargers will also get to steal a player from the Raiders. It's going to get chaotic, but let's do it. Unfortunately for UNLV and the Raiders, Zachariah Branch had a massive game and USC won in a blowout. We'd stay with college football for our next matchup. As our team wheel spun Indiana, the compass would send them south to take on UNC. This was a high scoring affair, but a late touchdown run from Caleb Hood plus a garbage time TD would seal it for the Tar Heels. We've yet to see the Carolina Panthers in this video, but thanks to UNC, they'll have two stolen NFL stars if we ever do see the Panthers in action. Staying on CFB 25, the University of Minnesota had a chance to help out the rest of the map by taking down Kansas, aka the Chiefs. Unfortunately, oh no, the Golden Gophers could not pull through. The Jayhawks take a W, meaning the Chiefs will have two stolen superstars, including, yes, Justin Jefferson. Spoiler alert, the college spins just kept coming. Man, this time Georgia thrust into action, a chance to stop the rapid UNC expansion. And that's exactly what would happen. USC slash the Panthers Linsanity run comes to an end. A big move for Georgia, who now had a big old target on their back as we'd finally return to the NFL. Our first look at the Cowboys moving west to challenge the Chargers. I went ahead and bolstered the Cowboys offense, letting them steal Joe Mixon from the Texans. The Chargers, thanks to a pair of USC wins, stole Cooper Cup from the Rams and Max Crosby from the Raiders. This game was super low scoring into the fourth quarter when Joe Mixon would find finally get seven on the board for the Cowboys. Undeterred, Herbert would march LA downfield in response, eventually finding Cooper Cup in the end zone to retake the lead. Dallas quickly found themselves with a fourth down at midfield, but elected to punt and they'd never get the ball back. That's what you get for playing conservative, an ugly Chargers win. I stole Herbert, another elite weapon in CD Lamb, but the Chargers burgeoning super team would immediately be put at risk as back to college football, we'd go with Washington challenging USC. UW looked primed to shift this video entirely. They were up two scores into the second half and they never looked back a wild and wacky 49-42 win. And honestly, I, I'm torn as a Seahawks fan. Like, yeah, that's a W for me, obviously. But as a content creator, that Chargers team stealing superstars, I can't believe they're done. Speaking of the Seahawks, we were back to the NFL and Seattle was up challenging the Chiefs, a matchup to determine the entire left side of our map, which is low-key hilarious. Thanks to a pair of UW wins, the Seahawks have stolen both both Fred Warner and Derwin James to bolster a pretty putrid defense. The Chiefs, meanwhile, stealing Tyran Matthew from the Saints and yes, Justin Jefferson from the Vikings. Oh boy. Ken Walker would open the game with a massive 54 yard touchdown run, but Mahomes would find Jefferson for a 33 yard TD to immediately answer. The Chiefs added on their 10 7 lead just before half. Mahomes to Kelsey, who else? To open the second half, new addition Derwin James, a massive interception for Seattle and return to potentially shift this game. Game. Kenny Walker would punch in for his second TD of the game moments later, but you'll never guess who had an impact, who shifted the game right back just, just moments later. Justin Jefferson again, this time a 69 yard nice TD reception from Patrick Mahomes, an unstoppable duo. Gino would find JSN for a short TD to keep the Seahawks in it, but Mahomes tossed another, this time to a healthy Hollywood Brown and the Kansas City Chiefs would eventually hold on. It, it, it was a great game. Five for 145 and two in his his Chiefs debut for Justin Jefferson. Unreal, dude. Just a massive amount of real estate taken over by the Chiefs and of course by Kansas in CFB. It's, it's crazy. Oh, and also the Chiefs go ahead and steal DK Metcalf. Pour one out for the rest of our map, all the rest of our teams, dude. I, it's it's probably over. With nine regions remaining, we were back to CFB. Buffalo versus Pitt. This game was a surprising slugfest and with one last ditch Hail Mary effort, Buffalo, they, they aren't Aaron Rodgers, baby. They'd come up just short. Back to the NFL, we'd go Tampa Bay return to action, heading north to
to take on Atlanta. After their defeat of the Dolphins, the Bucks were able to steal Tyreek Hill. Atlanta, two less sexy moves to bolster their defense, stealing Josh Hines Allen and JC Horn. But after trading blows all throughout the second half, the Atlanta Falcons have a chance to basically end the game. They're up five. They're from the two yard line. Kirk Cousins. Wow, he had Bijan wide open through it so late. Second and goal. Now can the Falcons do this? Would probably end the game a full seven. Bijan gonna juke outside, dive in. That was a really good run. Well done, Madden AI. Both teams would tack on late garbage time TDs, but indeed Atlanta, a big win. The state of Florida taken over by Atlanta. That's a pretty good move for them on our map. They also boost their wide receiver room nicely. Mike Evans, why not? We were really bouncing back and forth at this point. Our next CFB matchup would pit Wisconsin against Georgia. Good battle. I don't want to jinx Wisconsin, but they are so in this game. First and goal from about the eighth. Uh, eight, a nice touch pass. Why didn't he take that out wide? Doesn't matter. Moments later, Tyler Van Dyke, a five-yard passing TD. I, I didn't want to reverse jinx them by watching it. We've got Wisconsin with a one-point lead. Carson Beck converts for a five-yard touchdown of his own. Georgia back on top. Ches Malusi having a big game for the Wisconsin Badgers. Uh, no, no backs in the back. They, they are spreading it out. The blitz is coming. That's a dot. That's a dot to the back of the end zone, Wisconsin. Georgia facing a third and goal from the six and a half, the seven-yard line. I don't think this is four-down territory. They're going to settle for a field goal if Carson Beck doesn't find a man in the end zone. What? How'd you do? Where's the Wisconsin? You could have played much better defense than that. And Ches Malusi, after getting that first, will also convert a touchdown, which should tie the game for Wisconsin. But the Badgers would settle for a field goal on their next overtime possession. It's third down, but Georgia could end this thing right here with another. Rifles to the corner. That's, oh, we almost had an upset. But it wasn't meant to be, as down goes both Wisconsin and, of course, the Green Bay Packers. With six teams remaining, however, we'd stay in CFB, and what a turn of events here. Ohio State sent to take on Georgia. A battle of 95 overall schools to potentially flip this video on its head. The Buckeyes would open the scoring in this one with their stars connecting. Will Howard to Trevion Henderson for six. After a couple defensive stands both ways, Will Howard was back at it, finding tight end G scott for the score it's still early but georgia is looking absolutely shook and they're the home team we've got ohio state back in scoring position from the three it's a handoff and it's an easy punch in for six this time judkins getting it done everybody getting involved for ohio state a short punch in from dominic love it would mercifully get georgia on the board in this one but Ameka abuka had a quick answer a rushing td of his own for the buckeyes now honestly the rest of the scores weren't worth reporting 49 21 i'm I mean, I kind of wish we got a clutch finish, a banger finish, but uh, an upset will do just fine. Will Howard, only 166 passing yards, but four TDs. My man was clinical. Oh, and I know it's not technically an upset. Both teams very good, 95 overall. I just mean Georgia slash the Falcons have run this video. So uh, yeah, that's that, that, that's a big swing. Ohio State inherits the role of a big target on their back alongside Kansas on our CFB map. And it also means something actually good accidentally happened to the Cleveland Browns, congrats to that franchise. But now with just five teams remaining, it's it's really go time here, boys, as we're going to swing back to Madden and the NFL. Oh, are we going to see the Falcons and or Browns in action? They both have huge targets on their back. Wait a minute, Kansas City. Wait a minute. I think they can only play the Browns. Like, I don't even think this compass has been mad. There's definitely nobody west of them. Yeah, they literally can't get anywhere except through Browns territory. So we are getting this matchup of just huge real estate land property owners right now. Kansas City versus Cleveland. I mean, who would have thought this is basically the Super Bowl of the video? We know all about the star power Kansas City is poached, but the Browns, they've been able to steal Joe Burrow from Cincy and now Jesse Bates from the Falcons. Will those additions be enough for the Browns? Oh, no, I, I think they turned the ball over right out the gates. Are you kidding? Uh, 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 that is not a good start, dude. Oh, my word, that tough start for the Browns. They've actually played pretty well offensively. Nobody playing defense in this game, but if Cleveland can find a score here, it would be a tight game in the fourth quarter. We need it. Nick Chubb trying to go to work getting bottled up. Yeah, and Cleveland ends up settling for a field goal. I don't like that for them. Because you know Mahomes in those situations. He's not going to mismanage the clock. He's going to get first downs. He's going to come through. Dang it, Cleveland. You had a chance. A nice outing for Joe Burrow in Cleveland Orange, but uh, outplayed by Patrick Mahomes when it mattered most. Yeah, the Chiefs steal Miles Garrett. Oh my word. They're also just literally suffocating the life out of the rest of our map of the USA. This is hilarious. I've never
never seen it play out like this. At this point, our only hope is that Kansas, the Jayhawks, get thrown into a college football matchup to potentially trip up the Chiefs. No, I'm in full-blown hater mode now. Don't show me the Chiefs in this game. Let the other teams do... Oh my dude. I really should just rig these spins, brother. Not, not see the Chiefs. They're just going to win a game, steal something. There's no one north of them. They own all the territory. I guess I, I, guess if I put the arrow over here, like that's kind of north. Sure, Chiefs, Steelers, it doesn't matter. The Steelers have actually received a couple clutch steal of players. AJ Brown from the Eagles and uh, Josh Allen from the Bills. Oh, okay, they might be cooking. Oh my goodness. Josh Allen to AJ Brown for 28 yards. It really might be happening. I don't want to jinx it. it. Maybe I'm jinxing it. Pittsburgh's up. Pittsburgh is up in the fourth quarter. A chance to extend their lead to 10 right here, right now. Najee Harris on the give. The, okay, comes up short. Got AJ Brown in the slot to his right. He's uh, one of the best goal line running backs in the league. Finds Pratt, Pat Fryermuth. Okay. Oh my God. 15 yard penalty. All oh, the refs. The re of course, this is when the refs are coming through for Kansas City. They're going to need an onside kip, uh, kick, an absolute miracle to win this game. There's a, a touchdown pass to uh, Justin Jefferson. Yeah, pretty good little player there. Uh huh. Uh -huh. This is the game right here. Will Kansas City recover this onside kick? See some sort of miracle? <laughs> Not even close. Oh my word. It's over. Josh Allen finally outplaying Patrick Mahomes in a playoff type setting. Just took him playing for the Steelers to do so. The Steelers will steal Travis Kelsey, please and thank you, if we see an NFL matchup with them again. 90% of our entire map is going to turn Steeler yellow, Steeler gold, uh, the whatever you want to call it. It's beautiful, man. No more Chiefs. But where will our final few matchups take place? Only a couple games left. Oh, we're staying in the NFL. That's big time for Pittsburgh. But I think there's a chance we could get Commander's Jets here. Pittsburgh could be off to the side. Never mind. Doesn't matter. They get spun. Anything north, they'll take on the Jets. Anything south, they'll take on the Commanders is basically where we're at here. That's south enough. Pittsburgh Commanders, who we haven't seen since very early in the video. I couldn't bring myself to replace Jaden Daniels with Lamar earlier in the video. So Derrick Henry is here. Can he help carry the Commanders to an upset of the Steelers? No, he cannot. Although, what a close game. 21-17. I didn't see that coming. Unfortunately, close only counts in horseshoes, all that stuff. Okay, the biggest spin of the video, our final game, our championship matchup, will it take place hilariously in the CFP? No, the NFL. Wow. We could have ended this video with a random pit versus army game to decide everything. That would have been hilarious. I can't lie. But instead, after all the work they just did, the Pittsburgh Steelers have a chance to close this thing out against the New York Jets. Aaron Rodgers, Devontae Adam, are they, could they do this? The Pittsburgh Steelers having stolen Travis Kelsey, AJ Brown, Josh Allen, now Terry McLaurin uh, on top of a pretty good roster already. They're taking on the New York Jets with, yes, Devontae Adams. Only one addition to their team, Kyle Duggar from the Patriots. I mean, this should be Pittsburgh's running away with it, but we'll see. Uh, you don't know. I don't know. What? You should probably just meander back there. Dare I? No! 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 Oh my... No, 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 I don't, I, I don't. Are you Madden? Are you, dude, a blowout? I couldn't even make this final game epic or like, you know, intense because it, it wasn't. The Jets just dominated. The Steelers went through what they went through to get to this point. It does not matter. Madden simulation, they just do not care. It was a long and arduous journey, but after all that chaos, 32 teams down to just one. The New York Jets indeed are the final NFL team left standing on our map. They're champs of this video alongside ARMY who literally didn't make an appearance in the video, but sure, we'll give them the entire map college football style. A truly unbelievable finish to this video. Aaron Rodgers and the Jets, like how? I, I, I hope you enjoyed this video. I enjoyed recording it. Little bit of a chaotic idea, but drop a thumbs up. Check out another video from here on my channel.